Today we're going to be talking about something very common, cordless tools. Pretty well everyone has them, everyone loves them. Um, some of us old school people still like the corded tools. But for those who love the cordless tools, of course one of the issues always is batteries. Batteries die, uh, as the tool gets older sometimes you can't find the old batteries. Sometimes the price of replacing the batteries is prohibitive. One thing I love doing with the old batteries, and you can't do this with all, it all depends on the type of battery and how they connect, is taking them apart, and I'll show you why. So this one, I've already removed the four screws. Take that off. What I do for those particular type of covers, and it depends on each type of battery cover, is I'll take my shelf in my workshop, I'll put the four screws right back to that, mount that, I can then turn that onto its side, or upside down completely in my workshop. And that's a great place when I'm finished with my drill, I can lock it on, it's not going anywhere, it's not gonna to topple over. I don't have to have a toolbox full of all these tools taking up a lot of space. I can even just mount that directly right onto my wall if I want, and then pop that on. A great way of storing your tools, safe, out of the way, and locked on solid. Of course, one of the problems with cordless is Sometimes they get old and they're hard to replace and they're hard to find. If you look inside, what you'll find, you have batteries that are soldered together, just in a loose little pack formation. Usually they wrap them just to keep them tight. And sometimes that wrap makes it think, make you think it's one big pack, but it's actually individual cells. These cells, I've yet to ever see one that's proprietary to a particular manufacturer. Most companies that build drills don't build batteries. They go out and buy these things off the shelf they get someone, a uh, battery company, to actually solder them together and build out the packs for them. So what I've done several times is I've actually gone out myself, tracked down the individual batteries, re-soldered them myself. Quite often you can even go to a local battery shop, some place that specializes even in car batteries and other types of batteries, and they'll build these packs up for you. It's rather inexpensive. It's quite surprising that I can take an old drill that I can't get a battery pack for anymore, and I can go to one of these places where they have these individual batteries at a dollar or two each sitting around, you know, another 30 bucks, and they may solder them all up, depending on where you're going and depending on how many packs, and you've got it working. I've had it done for as little as 10 bucks, completely rebuilt. So if you can't find a battery pack, don't give up. <laughs> find a place that deals with batteries that can build your pack. Another common brand, we're just gonna open this one up. Same idea, I can take the top, bolt that to something, Use that for locking my drill on, keeping it out of the way, not wasting a lot of space. There is my top portion, just soldered up to my battery pack. Just give it a little shake. There is my battery pack, which a lot of people see and think, well, it's one big molded pack. Actually, all it is is one pack that went the extra effort and put a heat shrink onto it. So we can actually rip the heat shrink off. And there's those famous no-name brown batteries sitting inside. We pull this glue it on cover off in the bottom. You can see there's your little metal. And all they did was they soldered the same idea, soldered cells, put a little piece of cardboard to prevent any conduction. Put a piece of cardboard on top, taped it, wrapped it, and they tossed in your pack And after soldering on the different connection. So we got a third battery pack. We're gonna open that up. Same idea. There's our battery packs. There's the soldering. You can see there is a little circuitry board underneath it. Um, circuitry board, and this one is probably to ensure you don't do overcharging. Quite often you either have to have a really smart charger to ensure you don't overcharge your batteries, or sometimes you have a smart battery that prevents the battery from being overcharged. I can still do this exact same process. I can take those battery cells out, and quite often even if you take the covers off of these, even these brown covers, you can actually sometimes find information as to those individual cells and replace them. You can get your old drill working or your old cordless saw or whatever it is that you have and easy way to replace them and restore them. And again, the same idea. I can take the top off, bolt it to my bench, and it's a great way to store my tools. So hopefully that taught you a little something. And if you have any questions or comments, please leave them. Thanks again so much for joining.